the HP Victus promises to be a well-priced, well-powered, well, attractive budget gaming laptop that fits the latest Intel or AMD chip technology into a reasonably priced package. I've been using mine for over the past week and it's time to see how it's been holding up and what are the things that I've liked and what are the things that I've disliked. So what are they? Let's find out. That slammed pretty well, probably because the hinge is a little loose. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. The HP Victus has been quite a shock to me over the past week. I mean, I didn't buy it because I assumed it would be bad, but the last time I bought a budget gaming laptop, my old Dell G3, it was also an i5, and it was also fine, but it was never anything more than fine. However, I think there is an awful lot to like on the Victus, so let's get right to it. First note, no one provided this to me or is sponsoring today's video. I bought this and I wanted to talk about it. Second, I'm not really a reviewer, so if you wanted Nat's detailed benchmarks and specs, you'll have to check out some other videos out there regarding this laptop. I like using these and then giving you my impressions of what I as a consumer liked and what I disliked. And if you haven't seen my other videos on the Victus, let's quickly cover the specs and ordering information. Like I said in the intro, the Victus is unique in that it has both AMD Ryzen configurations and Intel 11th gen configurations. You can get the base model for $799 or $759 now. Honestly, this has been one of the strangest parts about the Victus, and I wanna take a moment to talk about the pricing. When I ordered mine from Best Buy a few weeks ago, the pricing model was very different than it is today. At that moment, the base model was the $799 Ryzen 5 option, but now on their website, the base model is $809 with a discount down to $759? Also, the 799 Intel version was 899, but now seems to be on sale literally a week after it came out. And previously, there were no display options, but now there are options with fast refresh monitors. Yes, I am frustrated that I spent $100 more than I would have today, but it makes me concerned that they didn't have a plan for the laptop series. It doesn't matter what the reason was. I don't like when there's ambiguity in pricing models or spec options. I like knowing this is how much a computer or piece of technology is going to cost, and here is roughly why that happens. So we haven't even gotten to the laptop itself, and here's something I don't like. Back to the options. The base model is today $759, and for that money you'll get the Ryzen 5600H 6-core processor, 8GB of RAM, a 256GB solid state drive, and the NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics card. The i5 model will have roughly the same specs, but cost $40 more, and this also also has the 3050 instead of the 1650 and that's the version that I personally own. You can take that all the way up to either an Intel Core i7 8 core 11800H processor or the Ryzen 7 5800H 8 core processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 1 terabyte solid state drive and the Nvidia RTX 3060 graphics card for around 1500 bucks. Again, I don't know what the prices will be like tomorrow, so this is an estimate that was accurate as of the making of this video. I hate that I can't give you a solid answer on this. Yes, things go on sale all the time. That's not what I'm complaining about. I'm complaining about this has been out for a week and I don't know what the price is going to be tomorrow. That frustrates me. And it's so frustrating to me because the first thing I want to talk about and the first thing that I like about this computer are the spec options. You can get a pretty seriously stacked machine for not that much money. Yes, it is expensive if you look at this in a vacuum. $1,500 is expensive, but computer components are are not cheap, and these are pretty good for the price you get. I haven't much used the 11th Gen Core i7 personally, but if this i5 is any indication, those higher-end models should be very well powered for a gaming laptop of this size. More on the power later. I have used the crap out of the Ryzen 5900HX processor to know that those 8-core Ryzen chips, those are also not to be scoffed at. This becomes a very well-priced, very serious gaming option, and even the maxed out version is less than the cost of a base model Razer laptop. And it doesn't smudge the second you touch it, so that's a win. That's a win for everybody. Win, win, win. I like the triple win here on The Everyday Dad. I've also very much liked the power. If there were one thing that I think is the gold star from this whole lineup, it's that six core i5. I was pretty well shocked at the numbers that I've been getting out of this processor. And if you've watched the previous videos where we compared this to the MacBook Air, this scores very well against the Apple M1 chip. That might not sound like an accomplishment. Gary, Apple chips are underpowered. Well, that's not true. If you remember, the M1 pretty thoroughly whooped up on almost the entirety of the 10th gen Intel lineup. So to have their mid-range option come back swinging and do almost as good in single core and do better in multi-core despite having less cores, 
Well, if that doesn't impress you, I don't know what would. Combine that with the RTX 3000 series mobile graphics card, and you get a legit double whammy system here. You can see from the 3D Mark scores that my 3050 isn't the strongest graphics card that we've seen here in the studio, but again, this model will run you $799, so it's really kind of hard to fault the power when this whole computer costs less than most graphics cards do by themselves. Again, I'm not a benchmarker, but you can see from the small tests that I've run that even this model packs quite the punch for the price that I paid. The next thing I've liked about the laptop is all of the I.O. built into its body. I'm a dual Windows Apple user with more of a slant towards those fruit machines, and it never fails to amaze me when you can get a full suite of ports on a computer. Here you'll get HDMI, USB-C, USB-A, Ethernet, SD card, and a headphone jack. That's, that's the best. That's the best, and I think that should be the standard. I really do not like the modern trends toward laptops being so small they are impractical by themselves. For example, I love my MacBooks. They are amazingly well-powered. They have fantastic battery life, but they themselves are super limited. You have to have some sort of adapter to do anything with it besides just typing on it. Here, even though the Victus is lacking Thunderbolt, you really don't need Thunderbolt because who needs a dock or some kind of a hub when everything can be plugged right into the computer itself? The computer itself is the hub. I know this is a gaming laptop, but even for somebody like me that travels and gives presentations with my laptop often, I really wish all computers had this right here. Odds are whatever office or client I'm briefing will not have fancy Thunderbolt monitors, and I've still got some offices that have AV TVs or monitors, so having HDMI makes my life infinitely easier. And it's crazy to me that the budget big laptops are the ones saving my bacon with all of their ports. You'd think that you'd have to pay more for this sort of functionality, not pay less for more. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You'd think if I'm paying more, I'd get more functionality, right? The next thing I've liked is the thermal management. Like I said in power, I do not have the i7 model. So maybe those two extra cores could cause issues. But even with the power I am getting from the i5, this thing is very well thermally set up. I was legitimately nervous when we opened this up during the unboxing because the heat pipe system itself, it's pretty small. And I don't think my concerns were unwarranted because in the past when I have had thermal issues, it's normally due to an undersized cooling system built on top of an oversized processor. And I guess technically it could happen to any chip but generally those issues were caused by Intel processors. So yes, my faith was not there when we opened this up, but in the past week, my faith has been restored. I think the thermals on this laptop are top notch. Something that I didn't know at the time was the grill here on top is not for the speaker, it's an intake for the fan, and it does a very good job keeping this laptop cool. When running several Cinebench multi-core tests back to back, this laptop never got past 75 degrees, and Yes, if you are a custom-built PC person, you will think that's abnormally high. For laptops, though, that's pretty darn good. For example, the XPS 15 that costs more than twice what this does, it has a bigger processor, bigger graphics card, and a bigger heat pipe system. But it's not as well thermally designed as this laptop. I mean, the extra space probably helps. And that XPS 15 stays at around 90 to 100 degrees during those Cinebench tests. That makes me uncomfortable and you don't have to worry about that here. And the next thing that I've really liked that I want to touch on is the keyboard. I think this might be my favorite Windows keyboard of all time. The keys, they're basically perfect for me. And I, I do say for me because everybody has a different preference for keycaps. I am not the world's biggest fan of mechanical keyboards, but I know, I look, I know, don't, don't yell at me, don't, I already hear the angry mechanical keyboards clacking in the comments below. I know they're super popular, especially in the gaming space. We all have our own preference. I really like this one. You get a full keypad on the side and you get great feeling keys. And because of how big the laptop is, you can actually get a pretty comfortable little typing platform for your hands. Thumbs up all around on the keyboard. And the last thing that I've really liked is the upgradeability. Yes, this is a standard size Windows gaming laptop, so upgradeability shouldn't come as a surprise, but I like what they've done here. You can upgrade both the RAM and the hard drive pretty easily, and you even get two M.2 drives with copper plates pre-installed if you plan on upgrading those. That means you don't have to buy anything other than the drives or the RAM itself. You don't have to worry about sourcing copper plates or buying laptop thermal pads or screws that may not fit your laptop. That means you can upgrade these very fast yourself. So those are all the positives. Now let's get into the things that I don't like. And though I am going to complain about these, 
because I did not like them. You have to see all of this through the lens of this is still a budget laptop. And with all the good we mentioned earlier, they had to cut the budget somewhere. So keep in mind that yes, there are problems here, but they had to save money somewhere. That's how product development works. First off, the thing I dislike most about this laptop after, you know, the ambiguous pricing model is the display. Just about everything about this display, I don't like. I do not like the hinge construction. I mean, look at this thing flop around. Look at it. This is funny, but funny bad is not a reason to recommend technology to somebody for them to purchase. This wobbles around even when you barely touch the laptop. So unless you are perfectly still, this monitor is going to be moving around pretty frequently. I also don't like how dim the monitor is. The version I have is a 250 nit panel. That's like, don't turn on too bright a lights inside or you may not be able to see it territory. Yes, you probably won't be taking your gaming laptop outside, but 250 nits is pretty dim and definitely means you won't be getting any sort of good HDR content on this laptop. Even the higher end display only goes up to 300 nits. If you're plugging this into an external monitor, no big deal, but I would seriously consider the lackluster display and panel if you are planning on purchasing this yourself. The next thing that I haven't exactly liked is the shape of the laptop. Not necessarily the build quality because it is made of plastic, but at this price, you are going to get plastic. What I don't like is laptops that are this tall that have such an aggressive edge to the lips and overhanging areas. Because if you were gonna use this for gaming or any type of work, this is gonna get pretty darn uncomfortable and I fully expect to get those little marks in the forearm and there just isn't a need for that to happen. Just smooth out this darn edge or do like what the Asus G14 does and when you open up the monitor, lift up the laptop just a little bit. So there's a little bit of an angle to counteract this edge. Maybe I'm crazy, but I don't wanna be uncomfortable when I'm using my technology. Like figure it out laptop companies. I do not like this. But at the end of the day, so what right? Would I recommend the HP Victus to you if you were in the market for a budget gaming or creation laptop? I think I would. This thing has plenty of power, even in my stripped down lower end base model. You can take those savings if you do want to buy a bigger machine and set up your own working from home or gaming command center with that extra funds. And I don't think you would suffer having one of these is like your brain. If you are looking for a premium product, I would not recommend this. You have to look at the Victus as like a box of specs. It's really there to be put to work, but it's not there to be pretty or to be the most comfortable option around. This is a well-priced, mostly well-designed, well-powered, and well-placed laptop that I think could serve somebody well, and I have no real problems recommending this in those circumstances to you all. And if you like this video and you wanna see how the Victus stands up to a premium laptop, either Windows or Mac, here are two videos approaching the sub, here are two videos approaching that subject from both of those brands. You can find those by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.